help from some of our seniors, and I'm asking them, like, what is the best way to connect with you? I had um, the opportunity to meet with Bruce from Community Services, and he was sharing with me all of the great work that his department is doing, and we came up with several ideas that will allow me to reach out to the community um, in places that they already like to go. Um, so I'm looking forward to that as well. So our, the third area of focus is the work that I'll be doing with the school board. Julianne and I will be doing with the school board. Um, it's really important for us to have a healthy relationship so that we can uh, work really collaboratively and we can challenge each other's thinking and make sure that we're all really pushing ourselves to be the best um, advocates we can for our children. And so I'm excited for the work that we have planned. Uh, I will start you know, meeting with you individually and building those individual relationships, but we also have planned um, to do some workshops together to really lay out the norms and the expectations. And I think that's going to be so critical in us being a high school team. The fourth area to focus on is examining the budget development process, and this is a process that really never ends. Um, we're constantly looking at, you know, how are we using our resources? Are we being as efficient and as effective as we can? You know, we're looking at the data, so how do we know if we make these investments in our schools and in our staff? How do we know that it's giving us the positive outcome for our students that we anticipated? Um, we're proposing new ideas, we're reviewing those. Of course, it comes to the community. The community gets to have ways to go. And then we're right back at it, setting goals again and constantly thinking about, okay, how can we be even um, more effective? And so uh, I'm really I'm really enjoying learning about that process. And one of the things that was really attractive to me about coming to Scarborough was the collaborative work that was the collaborative work that was happening between the schools and the town. You don't see that everywhere, so that's something that's really unique. Um, and I think it's really healthy. And I think it sends a really strong message to our youth in the community to know that they have all of these adults that are really um, advocating around how do we create the best possible community for you to grow in. Um, and that's exciting to me, so I'm, I'm enjoying learning about that. The fifth area will be identifying the priorities, thinking about the next steps. Here's some of the um, a sampling of some of the questions that I'm using to get input from the community. Uh, the ones at the bottom are copy and pasted right from that community survey that's available on our website. Um, this process, this part of the process is really thinking about what is it, what initiatives do we already have going um, that are working really well for our staff and our students, and how do we ensure that during this transition we don't lose any momentum in that work that's happening, um, but then also that we're thinking forward to what's going to be our next step. So just like I would expect teachers in the classroom to be asking these two questions about our kids every day. What do they do well? What are they ready to learn? We're really asking that about ourselves. What are we doing well? What are we ready to, to learn and do next? Um, and so this area of focus really helps me think about everything. So what can you expect um, throughout this process? As I mentioned, in about December, I plan to be standing here um, with lots of data to share with you and a nice polished report that sort of synthesizes everything that I've learned during my entry. And then from there, I will be looking to our leadership, um, our teacher leaders, and our, our, our formal building and district leaders to really start to think about where do we, where do we take our 24-month plan. Um, it's coming up on time for us to be thinking about that and being really strategic about not only the short term, but the long term. And I know that um, there's work to be done with the town side as well in thinking about the priorities of the community from that perspective and really trying to manage the needs in that way. So um, that's my hope that you know, throughout this process, those two tangible, deliverable things. But then also, what I think you'll find in me um, is that you'll have a superintendent who is inspirational to the school community. community. Um, I really want to work together with our staff to, to solve ch challenging problems, to take some things that maybe we've been grappling with or that the whole country's grappling with and get really innovative and creative about that. Um, 
and I think we have a great community of learners who are, have a growth mindset, and I really look forward to being an added member of that work. Also, serving as an active community member, I can't wait for the students to come back and get started in their clubs and activities and being able to attend those um, on the weekends and at night and bringing my daughter to those because she, she loves to see the big kids doing their stuff. She went to her first football game last season and she thought that was like so amazing. They were running across the field. Um, I remember she's doing that. <laughs> I also really want to work to understand the political dynamics of Scarborough. Um, and I don't want to just think about where are we now, but I think it's really important to have that historical perspective, how it's seems evolved and changed over time. I think uh, one of the challenges of being new to a community is, well, one of the benefits is that you just have an outside in perspective. And um, you don't have any emotional attachment necessarily to some of the things that others might, but that also is a challenge too, because you really have to have you know, high levels of emotional intelligence to understand where um, the sticking points are, where you can move, what are the symbolic aspects of different things, um, and realize that you know there's no need to change for the sake of changing, um, and the value of being really thoughtful and understanding what a change process feels like for folks when there are areas that we do need to change in order to improve and grow. Um, so having that historical political context is also, uh, I'm going to work really hard to communicate effectively. I am excited to see how people are wanting to receive communication. You know, personally, I'm a very visual person, so I love a quick video um, or a quick email that has bullets as opposed to something that's very narrative and, you know, heavy to read. I know a lot of us are reading on our phones as we're busy managing our families and our careers and our extracurricular assignments. We squeeze that in. Um, so I want to think about, you know, what is the best way to communicate? Are people on Facebook or are they on Twitter? Or are they not? Are they reading the paper? Um, do I need to have community forums? Is it important for me to be, you know, at the coffee shop on Saturday to connect with people? I'm really open to anything that people find that. Um, so I'm going to be exploring and testing out a few different things around communication. Of course, promoting our academic and programmatic strengths. Um, we have so much to be proud of here. That's one thing that I've definitely noticed. Um, you know, through the conversations and the opportunities that I've had to speak with parents, they're just so proud that they live in Scarborough and that their kids get to go to the Scarborough Public Schools. And that is a wonderful feeling to be able to be the superintendent in a community who is that passionate about their kids and the future of their kids. Um, you know, as, as you all know, I'm a doctoral student, and so identifying the current educational issues will not be an issue for me. I am <laughs> well immersed in the research and the literature, um, but really looking at what are the evidence-based practices and how do we incorporate that into our work, but more importantly, how do we ensure that all of our staff is taking the time to nurture themselves professionally? I will be doing it by default, but it is something that I take very seriously that um, no matter what your profession is, it's really important to give yourself that protected time to really grow every day. Um, and that'll be one of my expectations that I'm communicating with the staff. It, it sounds simple, but I really do want you to wake up every day and be better than you were yesterday. And I think when we have that kind of culture, um, it just trickles down into our, in our, into our kids. And um, it allows us to be happier, healthier, more productive and also, um, of course, providing capital and operating funding projections, both short-term and long-term, so we can think about how do we best um, maximize our resources. <coughs> so the, the caveat here is to remember that this is just a plan. Um, <laughs> it sounds really good on paper, but there will be, I'm sure, some bumps in the road, and we'll have to make some adjustments. I'm going to try really hard to hold myself to the timeline um, that we outlined and that I really received some counseling um, from outside sources to make sure that I wasn't having too high of an expectation and that I was still keeping the bar high while also making it realistic so that I can deliver. Um, that's going to help build my credibility. So, um, And then this is really um, a, a reach out 
know to the community, I, you know, I do need you to be successful. You need me to be successful because our success is going to be the success of our students. And I truly believe that through teamwork, um, through a shared vision, through collective commitment, uh, we really can do amazing things here in Scarborough beyond even what you're the amazing things that you're already doing. And this is where I'm just going to repeat what I said earlier. If you think I should be somewhere, or you think there's an opportunity for me to interact, and fam interact with families in a very really meaningful way, um, or community members, just give me a call. Um, let me know, and if that's me, I'll be there. So with that, I open it up to any questions or comments. Yes, tell me. Some of us here, and this is, um, I think this is very thorough. We really have fit every category. When we were um, starting our search process, we sat together for hours with the <laughs> close-fit notes and markers and what we were looking for in the superintendent, what were areas that we thought were important um, for a new superintendent to focus on, and you sort of like listed them one by one in your plan. So. Thank you for that. Um, I think it's going to be great. I mean, honestly, I love the idea that you're going to get some of that. That's a perfect place to just kind of break in and meet a lot of people right away. Great. Anyone else? Any comments? Great. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the journey through this. Yeah. With you. <laughs> I know you said that you would um, be able to come back with a report in December. It will be okay with me if it is until January <laughs> <laughs> because it's going to be a lot of collating and looking at a lot of information here and you may need the whole holiday off <laughs> and together. You're working straight through it. And I have, I have the name of a great massage therapist. <laughs> I'll be happy to share with you because I think you're going to be needing it. But On to 12.0, oh, which are the current uh, appointments. So 12.1, do you want to? Can I have a quick point of order? Is sure. it possible to vote on these as a slate? Oh. We can if the oh. superintendent doesn't wish to say anything about these people. Oh, um, right. And you that's something that I think is unfortunate. But do you want to just go through well, and say they're all I always thought that we read each person so that people know where they're from and mm -hmm. where it they is. came from and where they are going. I just wondered if it's possible to do that and then vote on them as a slate. Oh. Oh. Rather oh. than have to raise their hand, hand every time. single time. <laughs> is that, um, I, I would can I move? Let me do this. I move that we vote on these candidates as a slate after each one is presented individually. I'll second that. Very good. Any discussion about that? Sure. No. Okay. All in favor? Seven. That's fine. Go right ahead. Okay. So I do think that this is a nice opportunity to sort of informally introduce our um, incoming staff to the community and for those in the room, but also those at home. And um, 
So I'm excited to tell you a little bit about each one of these candidates. The first one is a high school science teacher. Christine Beecher has been nominated to fill this newly created position. Mrs. Beecher received her bachelor's degree from the University of Rhode Island and completed the teacher certification program in life sciences at the University of New England. She has been an ed tech in Scarborough schools and most recently finished her student teaching in a 10th grade biology class at Scarborough High School. Mrs. Beecher will be placed on step one of the bachelor's scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Christine Beecher as a high school science teacher. High school science teacher Stephanie Davis has been selected to fill this position created by a resignation. Mrs. Dave, Ms. Davis received her Bachelor of Science degree in Biology from the University of Maine. She has been a science teacher in several districts including Bangor, Bangor South Portland, Auburn, and for the last 12 years at Catherine McGauley High School in Portland. Ms. Davis will be placed on step 16 of the bachelor scale per, scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Stephanie Davis as a high school science teacher. High school social studies teacher, Ryan Facey has been nominated to fill this newly created position. Mr. Facey earned his bachelor's degree from the University of Maine in Farmington and his master's of science degree in education from the University of Southern Maine. He has been teaching various courses in social studies at Sanford High School for 10 years. Mr. Facey will be placed on step 11 of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Ryan Facey as the high school social studies teacher. High school math teacher Glenn Fairlin is chosen to fill this position created by a resignation. Mr. Farrellin received his Bachelor's of Science degree in Mathematics from the University of Maine at Farmington and both his Master's of Science in General Education and his Certificate of Advanced Graduate Study from the University of New England. He has taught many different levels of high school math for over 20 years in both Maine and New Hampshire. Mr. Farrellin will be placed on the Step 21 of the Master's Plus 30 scale per the Collective Bargaining Agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Glenn Farrellin as high school math teacher. High school English teacher Emily Hopkins has been recommended to fill this position created by a retirement. Ms. Hopkins obtained her Bachelor of Arts degree in English from Springfield College and her Master's of Arts in Teaching from Smith College. She has taught high school English at Northampton High School in Massachusetts for three years. Ms. Hopkins will be placed on step four of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The, rec the recommendation is to appoint Emily Hopkins as a high school English teacher. Middle school science and social studies teacher, Erin Wynn has been selected to fill these positions created by a resignation. Mr. Wynn earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in both psychology and public relations from Pennsylvania State University. He anticipates completing his master's in teaching and learning from the University of Southern Maine in 2017. Mr. Wynn, well, Mr. Wynn has taught both social studies and life science life sciences at Wells Junior High School for one year and was an educational technician, technician in Berwick for two years. Mr. Wynn will be placed on step one of the Bachelor's Plus 15 scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Aaron Wynn as a <coughs> middle school science and social studies teacher. High school guidance counselor Allison Murtha has been nominated to fill this newly created position. Ms. Martha received both her Bachelor's of Arts in Psychology and her Master's degree in School Counseling from the University of Southern Maine. She has been a school counselor at Longley Elementary School in Lewiston for two years. Ms. Martha will be placed on Step 3 of the Master's Scale per the Collective Bargaining Agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Allison Martha as a high school guidance counselor. High school special education teacher, Courtney Norad, has been selected to fill this position created by a resignation. Ms. Norad received her Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Delaware. She earned both her Master of Science and her Master of Education degrees from Salis University in Pennsylvania. Ms. Norad has worked with students for the last five years in Boston Public Schools. Most recently, she has assisted elementary and middle school students with Catholic Charities in Portland. Ms. Norad will be placed on Step 8 of the Master's Plus 30 scale per the Collective Bargaining Agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Courtney Norad as High School Special Education Teacher. Wentworth School Counselor, 
Danielle, Danielle Martell has been nominated to fill this position created by a resignation. Mrs. Martell was awarded her Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology from the University of Maine. She, was, she has also earned her dual Masters of Education degrees in Mental Health Counseling and School Counseling. Mrs. Martell has worked with elementary, middle, and high school students in several different capacities, including a school counselor, day treatment clinician, and a residential clinician. Mrs. Martell has been placed on step seven of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Danielle Martell as a Wentworth school counselor. Wentworth, Wentworth school classroom teacher, Lindsay McDonald, has been chosen to fill this position created by a resignation. Ms. McDonald earned her Bachelor's of Science degree from the University of Maine. She is currently studying at the University of New England and anticipates completion of her Master's of Science degree in Education in the spring of 2017. Ms. McDonald was a long-term substitute teacher for a fourth grade classroom at Wentworth School last year. Prior to that, she was a preschool teacher in South Portland. Ms. McDonald will be placed on Step 1 of the Bachelor's Plus 15 scale per the Collective Bargaining Agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Lindsay McDonald as a Wentworth School classroom teacher. High school part-time foreign language teacher, um, Sandra Dumont, has been nominated to fill this newly created position. Mrs. Dumont received her bachelor's degree in Spanish and French from Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada. She received her master's degree in educational leadership from the University of Southern Maine. Mrs. Dumont has taught both French and Spanish for over 13 years. Mrs. Dumont will be placed on step 16 of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Sandra Dumont as high school part-time foreign language teacher. Um, the last position is a combined position, high school point four Latin teacher and point six grade six to 12 humanities curriculum instructional coach. Michelle Shoup has been selected to fill the newly created point four Latin teaching position in point six, six to 12 humanities curriculum instructional coach due to a realignment. Mrs. Shoup received, a bachelor, received her Bachelor of Arts degree in both Latin and classical humanities from the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. and her Master's of Arts degree in humanities from Pennsylvania State University. She has taught both Latin and English in high schools in Pennsylvania for over 15 years. Mrs. Shoup will be placed on, on step 16 of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Michelle Shoup as a high school point four Latin teacher and a point six, six through 12 humanities curriculum instructional coach. Do we have a motion? Move approval is presented. Second. Any discussion, any questions about any of these candidates? Julie has no idea we're going to make her talk so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Seven. Congratulations in case there's anyone out there in TV land just listening in on this. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> to those positions. That. Welcome to Scarborough. <laughs> Thirteen point oh. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Seven, we are adjourned. Thank you.